But with a man on a date in 2015, easily one of the worst dates of my life. It's 2015, newly adult, on my own, a man that I was acquaintances with in college, not close, but acquaintances with, messages me on social media and says, hey, I think you're cute, I'd like to take you out. Mistake number one, I say yes. It's not even a mistake. Mistake number one, he was a criminal justice major. I said what I said, and I'm not sorry. Red flag. He suggests he makes me dinner at his apartment. Great. Mistake number two, I agree to let this man pick me up in his car, drive me to his apartment, where then I have no car, so it's like I was trying to get murdered. So we get to his apartment. We had great talks in the car. Everything was going fine. We get to his apartment, and I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. He opens the door. I walk around the corner. First of all, let me just... There's no table. This, this apartment does not have a table. It has a coffee table, but there is no, like, table, nor bar stools at the island. There's just no seats and surfaces of any kind of table eating situation. On this couch and this, you know, coffee table, there is six men. This mid to small size couch is six men deep watching cops loudly and drunk off their butts. Which, like, I don't care what you do in your own home. That's your prerogative. I just don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. In this season of my life, I didn't know how to do confrontation well. So, when he gestured to the floor next to the coffee table and said, Sit down, I'll make you a plate. That's what I did. He proceeds to walk to the crock pot on the kitchen island and scoop onto a plate a bell pepper with clearly unseasoned ground turkey in it and just plop that little sucker on the plate as clear or near clear liquid oozes out of it. He then hands me an already opened beer, not one he opened for me, a beer from the counter that was clearly already open. A room temperature pre-opened beer. To do part two. On it, my bad, fell asleep, toddler, you get it. Anyways, hi Claire, go moving on. Okay, let's just like recap on the floor, eating this flavorless food or pretending to eat this flavorless food, engaging with the roommates, we're talking, they're really drunk, but like they're being very nice and like fine, we're watching cops, whatever. Uh, eventually, well then very quickly, right? Like very, very quickly in this process, he stops talking to me. Like he's no longer making eye contact. He's not talking to me. He actually eventually walks into a bedroom that I'm assuming is his bedroom. Okay. I feel uncomfortable. This is weird. We're supposed to be on a date. Also, this is no longer a date. This is like borderline could very quickly transition into like passive kidnapping territory. Okay. Right. Because if you remember, I don't have a car. I am a dumbass who let him drive me to his house and I don't have a car. So at this point, I have a conversation with myself, right? Like self, yes. I feel weird, this isn't safe, we're gonna go. We're great, awesome. How, how are we gonna go? Call, call a friend, Uber, fine, great, awesome. Good plan, glad we talked, great plan, love it, let's do it. I text a friend who actually lives in this building. I had like a moment of realization, I'm like, oh shit, my friend lives here. I'm gonna text her and have her pick me up and take me back to my house because it'll be faster than an Uber, right? Right about this time, this man comes out of his bedroom, and he has clearly taken something. I don't know what. I don't really care. As long, you know, it's your house. Do what you want. But I am like, mm, we're done. You're done. We're done. We're moving on. I go tell him. I'm going to go ahead and leave. Like, I'm going to go. Bye. He proceeds to tell me, no, I'm not leaving. In fact, we're all going out to Dixon, which is like our street where all the bars and like the lit party street is like we're going out i beg your pardon no he's like looking at me going no you're not leaving we're going out and i'm like no you're going out i'm leaving like i'm actually leaving he proceeds to go stand in front of his front door and say no you're not leaving we're all going out together and you're coming thankfully i just kind of look at him and i'm like i'm leaving i'm leaving i'm going get out of the way he does, he moves out of the way, and I walk downstairs, my friend is there, she, we go to her car, she drives me home, everything is fine. Lesson learned, men are trash, uh, vet better, and drive yourself. I'm just reminiscing on the time that a guy from Bumble asked me if I wanted to go get food with him, and I said yes, and he came and picked me up and took me back to his apartment, and I said, oh, what are we doing at your apartment? 
And he said, I have food here. And I said, well, isn't that convenient for you? And he went to the fridge and he opened it and took out his meal prep for the week, which was a Tupperware with chicken and rice and broccoli in it. And then he opened his drawer and he said, I only have one fork right now. Is it okay if we share? And so we sat on the edge of his bed and watched Big Mouth and took turns with the fork eating his chicken and broccoli. I've seen a trend going around where we're telling our worst first date stories and I have one from when I weighed 250 pounds and it is just terrible. Start out, I had just gotten out of this like four year relationship with this guy. I never thought I'd be going on a date, but I was like, I have to get back out there. I was so nervous though, because I was 250 pounds and we all know how men treat big girls. Nonetheless, I wanted to be like everybody else. So I got on Tinder and I started swiping and lo and behold, I found Paul. That is his real name. Paul, if you see this, pulls up in his little slug bug at my apartment and I get in and he immediately is rude to me. I can tell that he does not like me, my size, any of that. Takes me to Texas Roadhouse and does not talk to me for the 30 minutes that we have to wait for a table. It's extremely awkward. We sit down, he orders his fish or whatever, recommends that I eat a salad. And since I'm mortified, I order one. After we get done eating, he takes me to the grocery store because apparently his dad told him he needed to pick up like a bottle of wine or something for him. But I'm underage, so he has me stand like awkwardly by myself while he buys it. He drives me home and I'm like, thank God this date is over. No, he walks me up to my door and I thought I was going to be like, okay, you know, thank you for the date. You didn't really pay me any mind, but whatever. See ya, never. No, he forces himself into my apartment, which... At that point, I pretty much knew what was going down, and I was way too scared to set any boundaries about it, so I started drinking some vodka. I was in my room for all of five minutes before things started happening. I was so uncomfortable. I didn't know what to do, what to say. It all happened within literally, literally, it wasn't even five minutes long, um, and then he left. And that was it, and the next day, I wanted to apologize to him for seeming weird, and he never never replied back to me fast forward to when my tiktok kind of blew up and obviously i had lost weight and stuff and paul came back around and i just wanted you guys to know they come back around it was a terrible date though and i will never do that again oh tinder was not for me I story at work and they said it's so traumatic i should tell you guys so i've like dated a lot of like i okay i've fucked like a lot of questionable people um and you have to give me a million and one excuses because i grew up fat and i had no idea that people like actually would do that with me so like once i figured it out like i was a hundred bomb so it was after this party and my friend like had gone to like go hook up and like do this thing with a guy and like i don't know what it was but i was just like i need to do that i don't need to go home so i went to the bottom barrel of my tinder matches and there was a news anchor um in missouri i got to his place at like 3 a.m and he was standing out in the middle of the fucking dark and i couldn't even see him and i was like walking it was like hey and i literally almost shit my hand skips i go into his house and there's like plastic on the walls and then there's plastic on the floor and there's no furniture you know kind of like a, a a torture chamber one might say uh i even made a joke i was like oh are you gonna kill me you know because there's plastic everywhere like you're patrick bateman and he was like ah, but he didn't say no right so he's like don't worry there's like furniture in my room we can just go upstairs and like i promise i get there and there's furniture right but then the most horrifying moments of my life start to happen he was like really close to me and like looking at my skin and then he took my skin and he like pulled it back like this and he said because he was older your skin is so taut um when women get older their skin starts to lose its elasticity but yours is still is very elastic i must have hated myself because i still slept with this man right um and this is where the horror keeps going right because he's obviously going to turn me into a lampshade after we're done mid by the way terrible he's like okay so now since we've slept together i don't have to impress you anymore and i was like what do you mean and he's like well we already slept together i can do whatever i want so he takes off the rubber that we used filled right like it's filled with the thing that i didn't want inside me and he starts using it as a nunchuck he's slapping it to the side and to the back and everywhere around and i'm horrified i'm like literally stop like fucking fucking stop and he's not stopping he's not stopping 
And he looks down at his crotch because I was also on my period. Sorry, I keep dropping these things. And he's like, wow, it looks like a murder scene around here. And this is the weapon. All while twirling around a condom full of cop and slapping it against him. Obviously, I turned this into a stand-up routine after I was able to escape that house. Come to find out, he was hooking up with one of the girls in the audience and she went and told him and he was like, why would you do that? Why would I tell people that happened to me? Because I can't fucking suffer alone, you psycho. And yeah, now I'm telling you guys, the whole world. So, sorry, man.